Good morning, I've been scoping out everyone's handbag as they came in. <laughs> um, see some really interesting ones, that's good. I need to tell you that I'm the substitute today. Uh, Leanne Papali was going to do this program. She's done it for us several times in the past here at the museum. Leanne is a scrim shander, if you don't know that, and has been in the business for many, many years. Unfortunately, she's having a little bit of surgery, and so she wasn't going to be here. So I'm your substitute. But I stopped by Leanne's the other day and said, OK, I'm your substitute. What am I saying? <laughs> She said, you know what to say, don't worry about it. I said, okay. So here we go. We'll just talk about a couple of really simple things. Taking care of your treasures is really very easy. There's only a couple things that you need to know about doing that. Um, maybe three or four things, but nothing really desperate. It's all really easy. Um, one of the first things that you need to do is realize that you shouldn't be displaying it in your house by a hot window or by something that's really hot, like on a register or close to where the heat comes out. Uh, heat is not really friendly to either wood or ivory, okay? So when you go home, look around and see where you've got baskets stashed and make sure that, you know, that doesn't like get all afternoon sun. Uh, because it'll dry it out. It dries out the wood and it will dry out the ivory. So watch out for where you have it stored. So that's kind of my first tip is uh, be careful where you keep the thing. You don't have to keep it in a closet. You don't have to hide it away. But just be careful that it's not setting, like I said, close to a heat register or right in the direct sun or somewhere where it's going to get a lot of hot or cold. Okay, so the heat, the temperature changes are something that doesn't set really well with um, the basket parts. Other than that, there's not too much that can hurt them, you know. Um, and yes, they get dirty and that, you know, but that's an easy thing to take care of. Most of the baskets are finished with either shellac or some kind of polyurethane now, the newer ones. And so what happens to them? They get dust, at my house anyway, and they get oil from your hands, okay? So how are we gonna clean them? Well, that's really simple. You just need a few little simple tools, okay? I even brought some to show you. How about an old toothbrush or a paintbrush? You know, just an old dry paintbrush, that works. Some kind of a toothbrush, that works, okay? Um, even a little brush, you know, like a soft, sort of a medium bristle brush. And so what you would do then, if you have dust, there's room here, um, if you have uh, lots of dirt in the thing, just gently give it a brushing, okay? That gets out most of the dirt in the weaving part of your basket. Um, if it is really bad, you can use, I mean really bad, okay? You can use like some ivory soap and just a little bit of it to put with that. You know, make yourself a little cup, put like two drops of ivory soap in one cup of warm water and take your toothbrush and just dip in the water and gently give that dust and dirt a scrub and then immediately dry it out. Okay, don't, don't let the water sit there. And if you have ivory, no water on the ivory. Okay, what water, alcohol, any kind of liquid will do on your ivory is take the shine away. And you know those basket makers and scrim shanders worked really hard to polish that piece of ivory. So you wanna keep that polished. And the other thing is about water or, like I said, alcohol. If you get caught in a rainstorm, you know, protect that thing. Hide it. Some people I know actually carry around a plastic bag or a shower cap to stick over their purse if they get stuck out in the rain because ivory really doesn't like to get wet. It, you know, it, it can be fixed, but it doesn't like it. So if you can avoid it, that's a good thing to do. All right? So that's a couple of simple things. 
The other thing, a couple of other simple tools that you can use. Supposing you have a carving on your basket and it's really dirty, okay? What are you going to use? Well, I like to use these little fingernail things, the orange sticks, I think they call them. And you just take the end of that and grab a piece of paper towel, give it a wrap around there, and then you can very carefully get in around your carving and clean. The other thing that works is toothpicks. Okay, so take that toothpick, wrap it around to just a little piece of paper, Kleenex or a paper towel, and get in there and try to work on some of that dirt. All right, there, then what the other thing that happens is um, you can wax it. Now the old time folks always used butcher's wax, okay? Butcher's wax is a floor wax or a bowling alley wax, and it has no cleaner in it. That's the secret, a wax with no cleaner. So it's just pure wax. It'll tell you on the package. If you're using butcher's wax, then what you do is, again, I always keep a piece of sock, old sock in here, leave that in there all the time, and then when you get that out, it's all full of wax already. Just rub it on, and the butcher's wax can go on the wood as well as on your ivory, on the handle, on the base, inside and out. And then with butcher's wax, you put it on, you wait a couple of minutes, and then you buff it off with a clean cloth or with a paper towel. Okay? The newest kind of wax are called Renaissance wax. Renaissance wax is available through um, museums, uh, a lot of museums, but what most of us do in the basket trade here is we get it from Woodcraft magazine. Comes in a couple different sizes. This small size is probably a lifetime's worth, okay? The butcher's wax I've had for at least 20 years. <laughs> This one I know I've had for at least 15 years, but you know, here's my piece of sock and I still have over half a can, all right? So you're just gonna put it on, and this one you buff off immediately. So rub it on. If you need a little bit on the end of that Q, uh, orange stick or Q-tip, to get in around your carvings, just gently do that. You don't want to scratch your ivory, you just want to gently get in there with a little tiny bit of wax on a piece of paper and clean off the dirt. And then once you get it done, do that and polish it. The thing I really like to polish with, besides paper towels, is a piece of t-shirt, an old shirt. Or if you have it, a piece of wool, like if you have an old wool skirt that you don't mind parting with, um, it makes a great buff. Or um, a piece of uh, lamb's wool or sheep's hide will work really good because it's got a little bit of lanolin in it, so that works good. But just put it in and buff it off. That's all there is to it. It's really, really simple. All right, the other important thing about taking care of baskets are the hinges. Okay, so who's got one here that I can grab? All right. Okay. All right. Oh, I have to take your stuff out. Is that all right? Oh. I'll just put here. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's all organized. You know how these baskets are. Or if you, somebody got an empty one? No, they got a seating ring. The hinges, if you don't know, the hinges are a piece of leather that is wrapped with caned, okay? So a most uh, standard basket would have the front two here and four in the back. Sometimes they have two, depends on how it's hinged, or just one that goes in and out this way. But they're almost exclusively made with a piece of leather wrapped with caned, okay? And what happens with leather when it hangs around in the air, is it dry rots, okay? It gets dry and it breaks, all right? So what I wanna do is try to, I'm, I'm gonna try to hold this up so that you can see it, but I wanna show you, I'm gonna give you a lesson on how to do this. 
And then I have a little gift for you, a lifetime supply of oil for you to take home with you and do all your baskets. All right? So what you want to do is get a paper towel or an old towel you don't care about and lay it down and open up your basket and lay it like this. Okay, so that you can see all the hinges that you're get, getting ready to work on. All right, basket oil is needs foot oil, N-E-A-D-S foot oil. It's a product that's been used for years and years by horse people who have saddles and leather products, any kind of leather products. It, it's a, um, a oil, if you were here years ago, the basket makers used whale oil. We don't have that anymore, but Needs Foot Oil works really great. Could you say that slowly, please? Needs Foot. N-E-A-D-S Foot. Needs Foot Oil. Okay. Usually at a shoe repair place they have it, uh, if you need to get some. And uh, it's just pure oil. It's made from the bones of animals. They press the bones. It's actually made like they used to do the whale oil by pressing the bones. So, um, but it's a great product that's been around for many years. Like I said, anybody that does saddle work or uh, leather work, they're very familiar with it because that's what you use um, with your harnesses and all of that stuff. Okay? So you're going to open up your basket like this. And there's a couple of places that are really important to catch, and that is we're going to take our dropper and put like one or two drops of oil each place that the hinge drops into the rim, okay? And then you're just going to let it set there for a few minutes and then take a paper towel and let, get the ac excess away, okay? And then if, if it doesn't look like you can get in there really good, come this direction. And again, just drop a drop on each spot and let it sit there for a few minutes. Just go away and forget about it for a while. And then come back and wipe it off. Wipe if there's any leftover, wipe it off with a paper towel. But just a drop or two, that's all it takes. Not much. I will warn you, Needs Foot Oil might make your leather turn a little bit darker, but that only means that it's oiled. Now, when are you going to do this? When you get the, your bag out for the season, okay? Do it then. And then when you get ready to put it away, do it again. Two times a year. That's all you need. And what that'll do for you is help maintain that leather. It doesn't mean that your hinges are going to last forever, but I guarantee you it'll make them last longer because they're not going to dry rot. When I get a basket in to repair or anybody does, usually it, the leather part is all dried out and that's what makes it break real easy. And that's it. How about, how easy is that? So all right. Put it on the rest of the hinge, just put it where You can put it on the rest of the hinge if, if it's visible, okay? It doesn't hurt a thing, but just be sparing with it. It doesn't take much, just a little bit. And like I said, just let it set for a while, and then after a while, go back and dab it up and make sure you don't have any leftover to get on your clothing. All right, any questions? Red wine on ivory. Well, I guess my best piece of advice is <laughs> don't. <laughs> um, if you have any major things, I really recommend that you take it back to the person that made the basket or somebody that does repairs, okay? Um, they can fix it for you. Uh, red wine will come out, but it, it basically it has to be bleached to get it out. And I would not recommend that you do that at home yourself. I mean, I think it's pretty risky. Uh, so I would take it to one of the basket makers, preferably the basket maker that made the basket, or like I said, take it to one that does repairs all the time, one of our major ones. You know, take it to Knapp or the Otisons or uh, Michael Kane or 
you know, whoever, you know, Jerry Brown, whoever made your basket, if you can do that, that's the best bet. Same way if, you, if your hinge breaks and you need to take it back. Try to take it to the person that made the basket. Well, you know, if they're not around anymore, you can't do that. But um, those folks that I named are still all in the business and they're happy to do repairs for you. Um, other questions? That same subject, um, when I bought that basket, they told me Larry Brewster made it and that he did repairs, but I've never been able to find Larry Brewster. He's on the vineyard. Okay, so, so you'll have to make a trip. <laughs> oh, darn. Darn, you know. But um, it, like I said, uh, one of the other uh, one of the other basket makers could uh, could do that. And um, if you don't know already, out at the desk, the girls have a list of all the basket makers, uh, current basket makers that are working on the island, and it tells on that list who does repairs and who does classes and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, other questions? Anybody? Can you say again about the Renaissance wax? Where to get it and what size is that? Eight feet this little one is 65 milliliters. Okay. Trust me, it's a lifetime supply. <laughs> and it's Woodcraft catalog, so woodcraft.com, I'm sure, on the internet. Thanks. All right. Other questions? Another yeah. one about wood, um, the wood bases. Um, can you use like a, a shoe polish and a clear min wax shoe polish on the base too? Um, I've never heard of that one, but I don't see why you couldn't. Um, basically, most of the newer woods are finished with polyurethane and they like to be waxed. Um, again, I do that twice a year. Uh, when I was getting ready to move this year, I had a bunch of baskets on the top of my kitchen cupboards that had been there for quite a while. And they were actually quite greasy. So I ended up with the ivory soap and the scrub brush in those and then dried them all out quickly and then um, went through and waxed all of them um, again. And a couple of coats doesn't hurt. Put it on, rub it off. Basically, um, that's what you need. And that's a good thing, again, when you oil your hinges, wax the wood. It doesn't hurt anything, and it helps it. You don't, you don't wax the weaving part. Just brush that off. Or if you've got something on the inside, you could take your vacuum cleaner to it, you know, and you suck the dust out of it if it needs that. How about the loop that on the front, and your left hand is near? You wax that thing, that loop right there? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. That has leather in it too? Yes, they, oh, all, okay. ha they all have leather, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. How about the, the no. handle, where the handle and the ivory meet? Or whatever well, where the handle and the ivory is, you do want to wax that part. And so, okay. all you oh, do, okay. right, all you do is just find that piece of sock that has the wax in it. <coughs> Put it on there. How about the joint? Oh, and then the little joint there. That joint doesn't doesn't need it doesn't really need anything. I'm not sure that I don't think that's what's squeaking. Okay, it must be the lid that's squeaking. Something squeaking. It could be. You know, uh, Mr. Reyes that sort of uh, popularized the purses. He made the pins that attach his handles out of ivory, and then he would drill a hole right through the knob and right through the rim of the basket. And when he would tip his baskets, they would squeak because of the ivory rubbing against the wood. And so that was always called the Ray squeak or the seagull squeak <laughs> for his baskets. But now we use, you know, brass pins and so we don't have that. And then again on the bottom, all you do is Give it a rub with your wax cloth, and then immediately buff it. And it just gives you some protection. You know, it keeps it uh, keeps it from going away. And you can do your inside too, um, and it takes care of it. You still have a squeak. I think we'll have to just give that another little piece of oil. 
All right, other questions? You said dry it quickly. Do you use a hair dryer or, or? If you're getting water on it? Yeah. Yeah. I use an old towel, you know, old dish towel or towel or paper towels. But you don't want to leave the water set on there. If you leave water set on your ivory, it'll actually leave a dent in it, believe it or not. So that's why I said be kind of thinking about the rain. You know, I mean, if you get stuck in the rain someplace, uh, like I said, a lot of ladies will carry a plastic bag with them or um, a shower cap or something that they can stick over, but, you know, or open your coat or your sweater and stick it in there until you get out of the rain. Um, it really doesn't like water. So try to avoid water or alcohol on it if you can. Other questions? Go ahead. I, I might have missed what you said. So the raised baskets that squeak, is there something you can do to make it squeak? Well, you know, you just enjoy that squeak because it's a notor <laughs> you know, has notoriety, right? Um, uh, I suspect you probably could put a drop of oil in there and that might help it, but Really, it doesn't hurt anything unless it drives you crazy, you know. Karen? Um, do you treat the oily woods like ebony any differently than you would a dryer wood, like a, a spalted maple? Or um, no, not really. Um, it depends on the finish of the ebony. Some people polish the ebony um, with an oil and then leave it like that but most of the time even though it's been if, even if it's a polished piece of ivory they will have waxed it okay so that's sort of been the standard finish for a long time um, so I don't I don't think so no there's not very many woods that are oil finished anymore there was a period of time here on Nantucket where uh, some people were putting lemon oil on and there's mixed feelings about that. If you talk to people that deal in the antiques, some of them will still say, well, you can lemon oil it, but really it's better to take your basket to uh, a professional and get their opinion and find out. Because if it really needs finish, they can tell you what the finish is, and they might put a fresh coat of shellac on it if you've had a repair or something. Or it, they may just tell you it doesn't need it. Leave it alone, you know. If you ever listen to Antiques Roadshow, and most of us do occasionally, remember they always tell you, don't mess with the finish, you know, because it takes away of the value of the basket. It doesn't mean you don't repair things. You can get them repaired. But be careful when you choose your, the person that's repairing for you and um, find somebody that really knows what they're doing. And, uh, and they won't cause you any damage. They'll help you that way, okay? Anybody else? You don't do anything to protect the weed fur. Not really. The best thing you can do is just keep it clean. And um, it, it, I don't really think it needs anything else. If it gets really, really old or you have to do some repairs, then you might talk to the basket maker and say, you know, do you think this needs a fresh coat of finish? I ha I've had a couple of things come in for repair and I always ask before I do that, but if, if it's in bad shape, it's like, do you want a fresh coat of finish on it? And you can do it, but, you know, again, it's like one of those things that you really don't need. Um, the only ones that do need something is if it's a strictly an oil finish on the basket, then the oil eventually evaporates. And so that's a possibility. But really most of the time, uh, the old ones all have shellac on them. <coughs> and the newer ones are polyurethane. And it, you know, it lasts forever. It's just not going to go anywhere. Okay, other questions? Anybody? Um, somebody usually asks me about the ivory laws these days, and so I was on the web last night to look up, and again, if you go to the uh, wildlife, Fish and Wildlife Services website, they have a very nice explanation of the new laws. Um, they haven't really changed. There's been a lot of hoo-ha about they were going to change, but they have not been changed yet. Um, and so any ivory that we have here on the island is perfectly legal to buy and sell and for you to own um, and treasure. Um, so 
we were all happy about that. The thing that is illegal now here is to ship it across state lines. So if you buy it and you take it, that's fine. If you buy it and you ship it, that's fine. But the basket makers are not allowed to ship it out of state, okay? So um, just, just so you know what's going on with that. Um, I think their latest <coughs> proposal to um, stop the use of the mammoth ivory is kind of silly since all of us at least 10,000 years old and I don't think we're going to save any mammoths by <laughs> stopping to use it. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you wonder what people think. You know, it's like, really? You know, you think that's going to help any? Uh, so, so far that I'm aware of, that has kind of gone by the wayside and been tabled. So hopefully we won't hear any more about that. But you never know. But if anybody asks you, you know, just tell them that. You know, they're only at least 10,000 years old. Do you think we're going to save any? You know, and there haven't been any for many, many years. So, um, but that's the latest that I've heard on that. All right, other questions? No? All right. All right. Thank you very much Thank for coming you. today. Thank you.